What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex, and in this video I want to do a preview wrap up of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, talk about some of the things I've seen other people say, there's a load of previews that are out there, if you go on YouTube just type in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, you'll see people like PlayStation Access, a personal favorite of mine, they talked about it, Joe Raptor, a bunch of other people were allowed to play it, it sounds like they were allowed to play three hours, all on Kobo, but doing different things, right, some people I guess went more story heavy some people went more side activities and just kind of off the beaten path and then they were shown a little bit of like a gauntlet to show the other two stances so they were only able to do three of the five stances and the one lightsaber one blaster stance and then also the cross guard stance they weren't able to play and they also didn't show but the developers showed it for them and a lot of them are saying the exact same thing it sounds like for the stance that's the dual wielding lightsaber pistol there's an ability that's basically like a dead eye where you lift the enemies up you slow down time you lock on each of them and then cal fires you know bullets that destroys all of them i love that it sounds like everybody that was there absolutely loved that ign in the past i think in their ign first month for star wars Shadow survivor they showed the gauntlet and they showed a little bit of at least the cross guard stance so i think we've seen a little bit of that i think the one where it's the pistol and the lightsaber that's the one they're keeping most secretive you know of those five and then we have what they were actually able to play. So generally, it seemed like all positives. There were very, very few negatives. One of the only negatives that I heard in the preview videos I watched were more of like graphical, like a glitch, basically. BD-1 floating in one location instead of being on the zip line, He was floating next to it. So beyond that, it seems like everybody honestly really enjoyed what they played. They talked about it kind of just being bigger and better. Now, that's up to you, right? There's always going to be that argument for any of these games games kind of like a part one part two but from what people are saying it is fallen order plus a whole bunch of other stuff so you got the fast travel you got just better ways to traverse the lands cal is more powerful obviously there's new stances there's loads of new enemies to take out and you see that in kind of the b-roll oh that's another thing i should throw out so all the footage is exactly the same it just depends on which order they're putting it in but they they were provided the footage from ea and from respawn they couldn't use Use their own footage when they played it so all the footage you see is going to be exactly the same just the order is going to change but going back to the subtle improvements that's what this game is going to kind of have to do right the stances the enemies you have to start cal at least as powerful as he was at the end of fallen order and for what i've heard from these people it sounds like he's more powerful than that right so take what you were at the end of fallen order add a little bit and then add a couple abilities and that's where you are at the start of Jedi Survivor. So then you're only going to get more powerful, you know, as the game goes. I've talked about it before. I'm just looking for kind of improvements around the edges, right? So I thought the story was kind of rushed at the end of Fallen Order. I think they've even admitted that the, you know, Vader parts at the end were rushed because they were on a deadline. They had to get the game out at a certain time. So they wanted to do more. So things like that. I've talked about like the camera work. I think a little bit of it shoddy or like positioning of Cal if you're not directly locked on with an enemy sometimes the game gets confused if you're blocking like properly so again like rough around the edges kind of thing if you can fix that and you fix those issues and then you just add to it new story obviously and it sounds like it's a pretty intriguing story even from just a three-hour thing they also weren't really allowed to talk about the story although i think one of them talked about at the end of the demo there's a scene where they talk about the next planet they're going to, and the person was extremely, extremely excited for that planet. They didn't say what the planet was, but it did get them excited. So that makes me very excited just kind of thinking of the possibilities. So honestly, Preview did kind of everything I would want it to do. It didn't show like an overkill of too much stuff. Uh, you know, we got some new enemy types. We got a little bit of new areas, I guess, of Kobo that we hadn't gotten before. But also we didn't get like the, the full thing, right? This isn't a three-hour preview where it's multiple parts of the game it sounds like this was one hour after the game starts and then you just go for three hours so we're not looking at like the tail end of the game you're not looking at the middle of the game you're not looking at more than one planet but I, I think it kind of accomplished at least for me as a viewer 
It accomplished kind of what I wanted. People are talking very highly of it. Jedi Fallen Order 2.0. And while I think that maybe upset some people, depending on how they look at it, again, what I as a viewer, as I as a player, you know, in a couple of weeks when I'm playing this game, I want a bigger and better Fallen Order. I want those rough around the edges moments sealed. And then I also want brand new things. And it sounds like for the most part, that's what we're going to get. So let me know, guys, what you think in the comments from what you've seen. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turned on. I'll be covering this game a lot over the next couple of weeks. And I hope to see you guys there.